Morning, yes, grassroots sport and of course fans as well. Still some way short of seeing stadiums full once again, but from next week we will see some fans returning, which is significant news. Yes, good morning. Uh, some fans will return when the national lockdown ends. Yesterday's announcement means a maximum of 4,000 will be allowed into the lowest risk tier one areas. For clubs in tier two, it's half that. 2,000 supporters will be permitted entry, but in areas where the highest COVID infection rates exist, tier three, fans will still be banned. And as uh, Sally was saying, uh, the measures will also see grassroots sport return. And someone who will certainly be pleased about that is Robbie Savage, who we spoke to a few weeks ago on the programme. Uh, good morning, Robbie. Um, you were very animated, fair, very passionate when we spoke to you last time out, saying that the, it was nonsensical, essentially, to allow children to be mixing in school, but then not allow them to mix in sports clubs in the evenings and weekends. So this news that grassroots sport will return from next week, you must be pleased. Absolutely delighted, you know, for all the grassroots volunteers around the country, but more specifically for all the youngsters who are now going to be able to play the sport they love. And I know, you know, as Dan's alluding to there about the tiering system, um, all grassroots allowed in every tier. You know, there's going to be a little, a few restrictions, I'm led to believe, in tier three, um, maybe limiting contact and training. But the overwhelming fact is that grassroots sport ca can continue in every tier. And that's the right thing. You know, I'm absolutely delighted for everybody. And it's worth pointing out just how much children have suffered since the pandemic started. Child Lines dealt with a 37% increase in counselling for children under the age of 11. And the NSPCC has fielded 25% more calls. So it's been a very real issue that's been facing young people, hasn't it? Yeah, it has, um, you know, as well, getting home from school, um, nights drawing in. Um, some children haven't got facilities just to go in their back garden and kick a ball around or hit a tennis racket or a cricket bat. You know, now it's an opportunity at the weekend to get out there in the fresh air, outdoors, run around, build friendships, get a camaraderie, win, lose or draw. It's, it's, it's so important that these kids go out there. And the big thing for me now is that when we're back, you know, the parents... You know, parents have to socially distance on the sideline. If they don't, you know, we have to follow the guidelines. So as a coach, you've got to be ruthless. And if you see parents mixing on the sideline, you have to go over and tell them, can you please follow the guidelines? Because if they don't, we could get shut down again and the kids will once again suffer. And it is great news for those clubs as well, Robbie. Obviously, you're involved with running a football team as well. For those people who give up their... I know he hasn't moved the uh, hasn't moved your Macclesfield mug. We'll talk about that in a moment. But for, but for um for those who who run those teams and those who stand on the sidelines, the coaches, evenings and weekends, it is those clubs that were actually under threat, weren't they? If if this ruling wasn't lifted. Yeah, it was. You know, so many community clubs. You know, whether it's in a, in, a, in the tiering system in the national league or grassroots clubs. You know, financially it's been very difficult for them. Um, you know, facilities leisure facilities, you know, council pitches, all these have been closed. So, you know, hopefully all these can open. But as you say now, it's just a, it's a, it's just a great thing that we can get back. Um, also, you know, I'd just like to say about, you know, the parents. Let's, for parents who watch grassroots sport, let's not forget now that we've had a lockdown one, we're now in lockdown two. And when you go and watch your son or daughter play, just remember that in this period when they can't play, Go and support them. Go and cheer them. Go and cheer the opposition. Don't be, you know, be shouting at young referees. Encourage. It's not about winning, losing, or drawing. It's about development of youngsters. Let them go and enjoy themselves. You know, and look forward to it. So less pressure on them. Let them go and play. But I'd urge parents now, you know, just to go and support. Don't shout at, you know, at kids and, you know, get given the fear factor when they get in the car you know, looking for, oh, did I play well? Just let him go and play. Yeah, I think that's going to be felt keenly from, from next week. And Robbie, I want to give that right arm of yours a rest because as we know, you're, <laughs> you're involved in the relaunch of Macclesfield Town as Macclesfield FC. You're going to be sort of bringing that, aiming to bring the club back in, in the lower leagues. And I think with regards to the returning of fans, it is crucial, isn't it, for those in the lower leagues because whilst we're saying it will be a maximum of, of 4,000 fans in certain areas, for lower league clubs, I mean, that will be that is a crucial number for those that rely on those gate receipts. Absolutely crucial. And I've been involved with Macclesfield FC for 
four or five weeks now and the, our whole business plan is around fans coming into the stadium you know membership schemes the club has to be self-sufficient myself and rob smethers the owner you know i've got some fantastic plans but it's key you know that in august where whichever league we go into you know fans are allowed to watch their new club macclesfield fc so you know i'm glad you mentioned that because you know, Dan sent me 15 books already this year since his books come out, so I thought I'd just go Macclesfield FC. <laughs> well, Christmas is around the corner, Robbie. So, you know, you've got a few more going. One copy I sent him. It'd be, be, be a great Christmas <laughs> stocking filler, wouldn't it? I was getting a bit worried yeah. that Robbie didn't have a kitchen table there. thought he was going to spend the whole time like me. Well, I was trying to wait where to see his face behind the mug for a minute, but... <laughs> John, actually, Robbie, you, you can watch it. I'm going I'm to practice sort of branding with the mug. So, hold on, this is go this on, is going to be go my on. new Robbie Savage technique. I'm just right. going to try and make sure to all the pieces of the yeah. camera, shove, <laughs> shoving this down the mug. So, you know which program we're on. All right, it's BBC Breakfast, everybody. <laughs> mug walks. <laughs> Brilliant. Really great to speak to you, Robbie. And, um, yeah, fantastic stuff. And, um, yeah, and look after all those mugs. <laughs> you know what people in your fa family and friends, you know what they're receiving this Christmas from Robbie? <laughs> uh, other mugs are available. Other mugs are available. <laughs> yeah, Robbie, thank you very much. Thanks, John. Thanks.